So here's Otani, first major league at bat, and he'll swing and bounce one through the right side of base hit. Jumped on that first pitch, and there's his first big league knock. That's a good start to your career. That's out toward the right center field. Going back on it is Zimmer at the wall. Goal! Big fly, Otani son! One of Japan's greatest products to America, high in quality, reliability, and fostering a loyal fandom is Shohei Otani of the Los Angeles Angels. As a two-way sensation, Otani has been a revelation in the MLB, but has ascended to superstar status because of his Japanese origins. In this video, we will explore the top eight ways the Japanese culture has shaped the MLB's unicorn. Number eight, early life and holistic development. Otani was born in Oshu, Iwate, Japan on July 5th, 1994. Otani developed a passion for baseball from his father, formerly an amateur baseball player in the Japanese Industrial League, and his mother, who was a national level badminton player in high school. Otani loved baseball from an early age, as a yaku shonen, which means a kid who lives, eats, and breathes baseball. As a teenager, Otani constructed an 81 box development chart detailing his goals. The step by step process is well known in Japan, and so is Otani's chart. Shohei listed areas for improvement in his baseball game, but for the mental and personal side. Otani specified that he needs to read books, clean the room, improve the slider, get the fastball up in the 100 mile per hour range, and be trustworthy. Otani's holistic development involved cleaning toilets in high school during his first year. Before you scuff at the idea, it's not an unusual practice in Japan because public schools have limited cleaning staff, so students do it to learn discipline and humility. Yes, Japan shaped Otani to play baseball at an early age and be a better human being. Number 7. Otani has the personality of the Japanese. Have you ever heard of the Japanese proverb, Derekuri wa utareru? Well, it was a famous line from the Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. You know, Sean, the Japanese have a saying, Derekuri wa utareru. The nail that sticks out gets hammered. The expression Derekugi wa utareru, as explained by Lucas Black's dad, means the nail that sticks out gets hammered down. Otani probably had these words drilled into him because the man does not stick out. The man is polite, soft-spoken, and discreet, and focused on baseball. Shohei's personality is the essence of martial arts lifestyle of the Japanese and a culture where there is a lot of discipline. No wonder Otani mania is big in Japan because the people see themselves in him. Man, that makes sense. Number 6. High school baseball breeds Otani's competitiveness. Shohei's competitive fiver was shaped by the heat of competition in high school. Otani came up in Japan's highly regimented baseball system at Hadamaki Higashi High School in rural Iwate Prefecture in northeastern Japan. Japan holds an annual high school baseball championship, which is known as Koshien. Otani once stated, Koshien is like our World Series, except that it's single elimination, so one loss, and it's over. Otani's fame went through the roof when he set a Japanese high school record by throwing a pitch 160 kilometers per hour, or roughly 99.4 miles per hour, to strike out a batter. Otani's eye-popping pitch made international news and attracted the attention of MLB scouts. Back then, though, he profiled as a pitcher, not a two-way unicorn. Otani was hitting home runs, but no one expected him to be the two-way sensation he is today. Show me the money on that swing. Number 5. Nippon Ham Fighters Defy Wisdom to Draft Otani In August 2012, in advance of the NPB Amateur Draft, Otani shocked Japan by announcing he would become the first Japanese player to sign with an MLB organization out of high school. After the announcement, big budget teams like the Yankees, Red Sox, and Dodgers lined up to sign him, and NPB clubs backed off. Except for one, the Hokkaido Nippon Ham Fighters, a club that embraces being different. The fighters had spent decades playing second and fiddle to the far more popular and successful Yomiuri Giants, with whom they shared the Tokyo Dome. But in 2004, they went ahead with a risky relocation to Hokkaido. In 2012, they hired Hideki Kuriyama, a former marginal outfielder who had no previous coaching or managing experience. Kuriyama decided to draft Otani despite his wishes to leave Japan, and it was a gamble because if a team failed to sign a drafted player, they would not receive a compensation pick in the next year's draft. In 2011, the move back fired when the fighters drafted future ace Tomiyuki Sugano. Sugano then sat out a year and then signed with the rival giants. After Otani rebuffed the plan,
plan, the fighters made a presentation to him and his parents entitled The Path to Realizing Shohei Otani's Dream, which pointed out that almost all Japanese players that thrived in MLB, including ex-fighter Darvish, had passed through NPB. Perhaps most important, the fighters tantalized Otani with a unique usage plan. Kiriyami met with the teenager multiple times and helped sell him on the team's vision of Otani as NPB's only Nitu Ryu, or a two-way player. The fighters sweetened their pitch by offering Otani a signing bonus of 100 million yen, roughly 1 million dollars, and the maximum rookie salary of 15 million yen, about 150 thousand dollars. The fighters also offered him Yu Darvish's old number 11, and the rest, as they say, is history. Fun fact funny rookie story. In January 2013, at the convention center outside Tokyo, the Nippon Ham Fighters showed off the team's rookie class and its edible product line. Otani is such a laid-back guy that he showed up to the event wearing a suit that didn't fit because he borrowed it from his teammate. The quiet and soft-spoken young man was greeted by thousands of fans, and he walked the company line. How? He dutifully scarfed down the sponsor's product ham. Yes, Otani is loyal like most Japanese, and quite the company man, I would say. Number 4. The first spring training showed Otani was a unicorn on the rise. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence and Otani supplied some even before games began in spring training. Early in camp, a group of older players were battling when a series of bat cracks rang out like rifle shots from a nearby field, drawing the other fighters towards the source of the sounds. Turns out it was Shohei Otani putting on an exhibition at batting practice. Micah Hoffpower, the former Cubs hitter who had signed with the fighters after the 2010 MLB season, stated every ball came off the bat really well and just hard. It's a different sound. It reminded him of stories about Josh Hamilton, the people he hearing the ball come off the bat going, damn, sounds different. Otani was like that. Even at 18, he was like that. Fine, the kid could hit, but could he pitch? That question was answered a couple days later when Otani took the mound. Hoffpower continued, he's out on the field and he's throwing a sim game or something like that, a couple hitters stepping in to watch him throw and take some swings or whatever, and the ball just effortlessly jumps out of his hand. And you're like, holy man, this is impressive. We stood around the cage and watched because it was fun to watch the ball come out of his hand like it did and know that this guy could potentially hit fourth in the lineup for us tonight, and he'd be really good at that too. Yes, it was the first warning shot that Otani was just a unicorn on the rise. Number 3. Otani was resolute despite criticism. Otani had ruffled feathers by declaring that he didn't want to play in NPB, deepening fears of a mass exodus to the states that could devastate Japan's top-level league. Then, he ruffled a few more by flip-flopping after telling teams not to draft him. After that drama died down, MPB's old guard resented Otani's quest to topple the tradition of being a two-way player. There were a lot of players who felt he was taking the game very lightly, and the root of the attitude was, you shouldn't do both. They felt that hitters were toiling, sweating, spending every day refining their swing plane, and here was a guy who was taking the last hour and throwing pitches in the bullpen. If you are a star and you, are, you need an interpreter, that might have something to do not everything because there's a lot of things that go into it but that might have something to do with your inability to ingratiate yourself with that young demographic to attract them to the sport. Otani's two-way dream made him a frequent target of NPB all-time hits leader turned commentator Isao Harimoto. In 2014, Harimoto stated after Otani hit only 10 home runs, Shaoi Otani is being childish. His selfish desire to hit is taking at bats from real players, angering his teammates, and keeping him from becoming the player he could be. Most observers weren't rooting for Otani to fail, but they just thought it was inevitable that he would lower his sights and become a conventional player. However, both the fighters were unfazed, and Shohei was not about to give up on his dream to change history. Number 2. Otani Improves Through Hard Work In order to realize his dream, Otani got better through discipline discipline and hard work, which is emblematic of the Japanese culture. Otani tended to keep to the team dormitory and the gym even. He was considered a baseball monk. It took that kind of dedication to hold down two jobs in a professional baseball league and do both roles at an elite level. Otani from his time in Japan had the devotion and discipline to make it through both batting practices and bullpen sessions, study two sets of scouting reports, and maintain the training programs, recovery regimens, and nutrition plans that make his two-way high wire act possible. Talk about having that desperate move right away. The mood and the swing for Shohei Otani. This baseball went a ton. Getting that out in front, perfect balance and lift. Otani was outwardly egoless and absorbing information like a sponge from the veteran players and pitching coach. Yes, like all the great ones, Otani was a sponge and had the work ethic to be one of the best. Number one, Otani becomes a superstar in NPB. He's phenomenal. He's an awesome pitcher, let alone he's an awesome batter. I think he's very cool, very exciting to see him play. 
Otani was popular among fans as a rookie because he was voted an MPB All-Star and started at his home park where he pitched and played outfield in front of the fans. In the next game, he hit leadoff and it was like a coming out party. However, after another All-Star selection in 2014, it was in 2015 that Shohei went to the superstar level. Otani's performance on the mound was among the best in the league, earning him the starter role in the 2015 All-Star game and the pitching spot in the end of the year Pacific League Best 9 awards. Otani finished the season 15-5 with a 2.24 ERA, 196 strikeouts, and only 100 hits in 160 and two-thirds innings. He led the PL in ERA, tied for the most wins, and was second in strikeouts. His hitting needed some work with a 202 average and five home runs. It bared fruit in 2016 when he averaged 322. Otani hit 22 home runs, 18 doubles, and 67 RBI in 104 games and 382 plate appearances. Shohei won the Best 9 award as a designated hitter. Otani was a dominant pitcher on the mound with a 10-4 record, 1.86 ERA, striking out 174 batters in 140 innings with 4 complete games and 1 shutout in 21 games pitched. He also won the Best 9 award as a pitcher and won the Pacific League MVP. He became the first player to receive the awards as both a pitcher and a hitter and led his team to the Japan Series. Shohei's 2017 season was affected by an ankle injury, but the baseball world had seen enough. Shohei Otani had the chance to become the modern day Babe Ruth in North America. What do you make of Shohei Otani's story and rise from Japan? Do you appreciate his two-way brilliance? Let me know in the comments section. Smash the like button and subscribe for more premium sports content. Until next time.